Right, so in this week's feedback feature, we're going to hear a few tasty guitar techniques from Brian May, the lead guitarist with Queen. Welcome, Brian. Thank you, Mike. First of all, let me ask you, where did this amazing guitar come from? Because it doesn't look like a shop guitar to me. No, I made it myself about ten years ago, in fact, when I was at school, to show how old I am, with my father. And it was made with some special ideas in mind to get the effects that I wanted. Mm -hmm. What sort of effects uh, are those? I mean, because I know you like uh, natural effects rather than effects for effects' sake. Yes, I wanted to use the, the voicing of an electric guitar to its fullest as opposed to just an amplified uh, acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things were built with that in mind. It was built to have a lot of sustain. So normally, um, if you play a guitar without much amplification, it'll just... Uh, just does that kind of thing. If you turn it up and the, the body is built right so that you get acoustic feedback, it'll sustain for quite a long time like this. In fact, if I was standing near the amplifier, you, you would sustain longer. Yeah. You get a very rough sort of sound in I see. And you're yes. playing with a six penny piece, an old six penny piece. Yes, um, I've always used these for as, as long as I can remember. They're very versatile because you can get a very sharp effect by using the serrations. Mm. And you get a complete contact with the string because every little touch you can feel with your fingers. And uh, you can also use them straight, in which case they, they make quite a mellow sound. So the mellow sound would be like this. Mm. Whereas if you turn it sideways, you'll go... In fact, the guitar was built with that in mind as well. I wanted to get a large tonal range, so that's why we have three pickups. Mm -hmm. And I have the ability to change the phases of the pickups. So if I use two pickups together, it'll make a sound like this. If I reverse the phase of one of the pickups, it goes very trebly. Mm. Like this. And you can, I notice you're bending the notes quite a long way. You've got your yes. strings very, very slack, it seems. Yes, I do work with slack strings. Not as, um, there are limits to how slack you can have them because, as you were saying earlier, you get to the point where you can't play chords in tune. But I like them fairly slack so that you can push them up a long way because it's a very important thing about an electric guitar. Mm -hmm. so how these, long can you push those? These will go up about a fifth. This particular string will go up a fifth or so. You can see it. The other end of the scale, uh, that, the, the, uh, the tremolo will take it down. This is a, 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 a special designer tremolo which, which I put on and made myself, and this will take the strings down like this. On a good day, that will go down about an octave or so. And you say you've your own tremolo on. Did you make that? Yourself? Yes, I made that on myself as well. It, it's filed out of mild steel and balanced on the knife edge. Mm. Obviously, you've got to uh, be fairly precise when making these. You can't just stick them on any old. No, there's a lot of thought goes into it. You have to make sure that the thing can bear the, the stress of the strings apart from anything else, because guitars tend to bend unless they're very carefully made. What so about other way. techniques? I mean, is it possible to make your guitar sound a little bit like any other instruments as well? Yes, depending, particularly in the studio, if you get the right conditions, if you put the microphone in the right place and you get in the right place relative to the mm -hmm. amplifier, you can get continuous, continuous sounds which sound more like a cello. So perhaps something like this. <laughs> Perfect, but that's the kind of, of continuous thing you can do. Yeah, let's beware. <laughs> this this uh, hissing, this almost phasing sound I can hear. That is phasing. Yes. Yeah, that, that <laughs> is a phasing. I was using a phase pedal then, yeah, which is one of the effects which I do like to use on mm. stage. Because it gives the, the guitar a little bit more sustain and a little bit more depth. And it also has a nice top edge to get the clarity of the single notes out. Mm. The other effect I use, which you're probably going to ask me about, um, is the echoplex, which yeah. is in fact a modified echoplex. And it gives me, instead of a, an echo effect, it gives me a, a single repeat effect. So I can play a phrase and it'll come back at me, and I can play another phrase on top, which can be in harmony or in counterpoint, or, or I can play a chord once and then play a lead on top of it. So it's like building bricks, you just build up. Exactly, yes, you can build up things. And it needs a lot of care, it needs a bit of um, playing around with to, to know the things which work and the things which don't, because you can get in a terrible mess if you play the wrong things. I can imagine. Obviously. <laughs> well, Brian, it's been great to come along. Sorry, we haven't got any more time. Uh, it's been great to show uh, you to share some techniques. Maybe we could go out with you playing uh, Frere Jacques or uh, some such thing that you can yes. build up and okay. show us how the Echoplex works. Okay, this is the Frere Jacques thing that you mentioned can be done with just one repeat. And you play the phrase and it'll come back, so you'll see this. Basically, I play a note. <laughs> And it comes back, okay. So I can play this phrase that goes... Which is kind of fun. 
Um, the full effect is to use, as I do, the, the other repeat as well, so I can build up three part harmonies. And that goes like this. Thank you. My guitar playing will never seem the same after that. We'll see you next week in another feedback feature. Meanwhile, it's back to Meg.